So today, how to hook up your shit stack. So and one of my viewers named Michael says, I could use some much needed advice. You have the complete stack sitting in front of you. Is it possible to show how all these units are hooked up? Shit does not include any instructions with any of their units, so please help. Well, it's funny for me because when I was a child, my father's stereo system, well, I figured out how to hook that up myself. So I never really thought about the fact that there are obviously people out there who have never hooked up audio components in their life. So today I'm not going to just show you how to hook up one stack, but actually three in a sense. I'm going to be hooking up a mini stack from Shit Audio, a medium sized stack, which also applies for their larger components, and also how to hook up things such as this dongle deck or some kind of sound card to your to a headphone amp such as the one we have here. And actually not just to this one, but even a larger one. So let's get started. To start with, we're going to be hooking up the very basic Shit Audio stack. And I should note that this is if you have the separate Magni headphone amp and Modi, say the Modi Multibit, which is what I have in this case. This doesn't apply if you already have like a Magni which has the built-in DAC because that will, you only have to hook up USB for that purpose and plug in headphones. Now with the Modi Multibit, which I have here, if we flip it around to the back, we have a number of different connectors where we have the power in. And before you hook up the audio outputs, you will want to leave that switch off so that you don't have any kind of funny noises going through your system. Most people will be using the USB-C input. If you have one of the older Modis, the Modi Multibit in this case, it may have a USB-B connector, but essentially you're going to be using some kind of USB cable. Now, if I use one of the cables I have on hand is this usb C to well, A to C connector, so I'll hook A into my computer and C here. Now, if you have a, say, a notebook computer which has USB C outputs, you might want to use, well, I've got a random USB C to C cable here. The good thing is that you don't need any particularly sophisticated cable for hooking up audio. It has only uses only the old USB 2 standard, so you don't need anything particularly fast. In fact, this USB C to C cable, I don't even know what kind of specifications it has, but as it has very doesn't have any kind of markings or indications on it, I presume it's only USB 2. Anyhow, I have this USB, it's actually quite in well, quite maybe a slightly more fancy one. It has a blue connector on one end, and I believe it's USB 3.0 compatible. The only advantage this may have is it has slightly better shielding than a USB 2 cable. One thing I will note is make sure you don't use something like a charge only cable, you know, those super thin USB cables that come with some devices. They may not work as they only allow for charging. And the other thing is as well, they may have you know, a lack of shielding and it may allow some electrical noise through to the devices, which may not be good. But anyhow, as long as you get most of the time, if you have some kind of USB cable, you should be able to hook it up without issue. You also have, of course, the optical input port and the coax digital port, which confusingly uses the same connectors as the analog outputs. And these are for you know, special sound cards or hooking up to your TV or something or other, which has one of these digital outputs on it. The only thing to make sure is that if you do use one of these digital outputs, say from a TV, make sure it's not set to five channel mode, otherwise you won't get any sound or you'll get very bizarre sound. Now once that's done, you have the back of the headphone amp. The only confusing thing here is that the back of the headphone amp can have both inputs and outputs for the analog section. Now the inputs and outputs have two channels. You have the left channel and the right channel. Most of the time the left channel is indicated by white and red indicates the right hand channel. So you have left and right very clearly indicated. We'll see later actually one of Shit Audio components doesn't have color indication. Now in this one you have to check that we have inputs and outputs. If you accidentally hook up the outputs of the DAC to the outputs of the headphone amp, you won't get any sound and I've made that mistake. So make sure you know which is in and out. Then what you'll want to do is you'll need a pair of RCA cables in this case, which you can get from Shit Audio or just about anywhere. This is actually a DIY pair I made. And then all you really have to do is hook left into left and right into right. Usually they're color coded. It doesn't matter if they're switched the wrong way around, except left and ch right channels can be easily confused. Let's check on the back here. Okay, we want input into the headphone amplifier as such. And then once we've hooked up our USB-C and powered on, so our USB-C will go in here. I won't show the power hookup because it's kind of unnecessary. And there you have your basic headphone, well, shit audio headphone stack, and it applies pretty much to all brands, ready to go for listening to headphones. And then you just have to power them on. And if you don't get any sound, make sure your connections are correct. Make sure that you have selected 
USB on the front and USB will be the, in this case, indicated by a horizontal mark. It is, and the uh, optical will be indicated by a square or almost square mark and a round mark for the coax digital input. Make sure you have the correct input set and the correct output set on your computer or device and if you don't get any sound. But that's the basic hookup for a small, you can say small shit stack. And now let's move on to one that's bigger, which uses what are known as balanced XLR connections. Here we have a set of medium sized shit audio components, in this case a Jotunheim 2 and a Bifrost 2. Now if we switch these around to the back, you'll see they have more connectors than the small shit audio components we looked at just before. So these have these XLR sockets, which are called, well known as balanced generally, and that's because they use a dual signal, which is an, one signal and an inverted signal to help cancel out noise. This is usually used in pro audio for long runs, but is also because a lot of digital gear outputs balance to begin with, and it just tends to be a better connector. So we also have the connectors we saw before, the left and the right RCA ones. Now, let's say you want to hook up this Bifrost 2 to this Jotunheim 2. Well, you have the power sockets as usual, which you'll plug in yourself. Make sure they're off generally when you're hooking up, compo uh, hooking up components, otherwise you may get some issues with noise, especially if you're connecting this to a subsequent speaker system. What you're gonna do in this case is use XLR cables, which I have a set sitting here. XLR cables are a little bit different from RCA is that the plugs on each end are slightly different. And you can already see from the sockets on the back that they are they have a polarity. So the sound goes in the direction of the pins. This is, this is the male plug, and the sound goes from the female to the male. So it's, yeah, that you kind of get the idea. So I actually made up this set myself, which have uh, indicated markings of left and right and with white and red, and it's much the same with the components in that they should have some kind of, if they don't have a color indicator on them, they'll have at least very small markings. And I can just see using the my monitor here that they have very tiny markings indicating left and right. However, usually what happens if, if I'm facing a component, I know that on my left, usually the connector is for, would go to the left speaker and right, right speaker. So I know that sometimes when I do have things in my rack and I'm reaching around to plug stuff in, I can kind of reach around and go, ah, there are the sockets. And I know this is going to be left and this is going to be right. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the Bifrost 2 up to the Jotunheim. So as usual, we have in this case, a full-sized USB connector for the Bifrost 2. And I just have a basic USB cable to indicate here. That is going to go into, and I'm gonna to have to use my monitor to cheat here so I can see what I'm doing, into the USB socket. Okay, not gonna happen. This one, the USB socket is upside down. And then that's going to go into my computer. Again, don't try not to use a cable that's too thin or too basic. Sometimes you can get ones with ferrites on them. You want something which is used as a proper USB cable and has some kind of markings on it that says the kind of USB cable it is. And that will be shielded and most likely to avoid any kind of noise or interference if you're, and maybe even dropouts if it's a poor quality cable. So I'll just, uh, once that's hooked in, and again, you have connectors also four different digital inputs. You have the coax digital one here and the optical one. You can choose one of those three and select them on the front afterwards. Then once you've done that, we want to go from the Bifrost 2, which is the digital to analog converter, and you, you can see it only has male sockets on here. So we're gonna connect our female end of our XLR cable in there. And I'm gonna do this sort of using the monitor here. I can do it almost by feel. Ah, these ones are upside down. So I know that they can only go in one way, so you can't make a mistake. Our left and our right here correctly. And then we're gonna hook the other end into the inputs of the Jotunheim. Now the good thing is, unlike the RCA connectors, the inputs are going to be female, so you can't actually mistake plugging them into the outputs with the XLR cables. So I have right is going to be on my right and left is going to be on my left. This is what happens when you use the monitor and can't quite see what you're doing. There we go. <clears throat> and there we go. You're all hooked up. And of course, with the USB plugged into the Bifrost down here. And then you'll just hook up your headphones and of course power, and then switch both of them on as necessary. And you're good to go. And if you don't have sound, make sure that you have selected the correct inputs 
on the Bifrost, the correct digital input, the USB. If you don't have sound from the Jotunheim or your amplifier, make sure that you have selected, and on my front here I have selectors for the XLR. I need to make sure that's set as well. Now a question you might have is, what if I don't have XLR cables? Can I hook them up via RCA? Absolutely you can. Just like we saw with the mini stack, this has actually XLR, uh, sorry, RCA outputs on the back of the Bifrost, although they're black in this case, and you can hook up left to left and right to right on the using the RCA connectors instead. So it's not necessary to use XLR connectors, although these both these devices are optimized for the XLR connection. There may be a slight improvement if you use the XLR use XLR cables. Now another question someone asked me is if I have RCA to XLR converter cable, I'd say don't bother. The, the conversion bit from RCA to XLR, or I should say single-ended to balanced, is done automatically inside the Jotunheim or inside the headphone amp that you use, and you don't have to worry about using special cables. You should use cables which are only terminated with XLR or only terminated with RCA when hooking up these components. So next up, what happens if you have something like a dongle deck or something like this Chord Mojo? and you want to hook it up to something like one of these two headphone amplifiers. Well, in that case, it's fairly simple and straightforward. All you need is a special adapter cable or a special adapter. Now you see this little adapter here has on one end a headphone plug and on the other end, the RCA sockets that we saw on the back of the Modi Multibits that I have over here and also on the Bifrost. So the headphone socket end just goes into the headphone socket output of the device you want as a source, whether it be this Mojo or in another case, there's this Kain dongle DAC I have here, which you can hook in. And then you can hook it up exactly the same way as you saw before using a set of RCA cables. Whereas in this case, of course, the we have the left goes into left, right into right, and then the other end as before goes into the back of the headphone amplifier, making sure of course that you're going to the inputs and then and not the outputs as a mistake that I have sometimes made. And there you have the hookup is exactly the same as you had previously. The other kind of thing you can do is instead of a adapter, you can also get cables. This is an AudioQuest cable I've had sitting around in my drawer actually for many years. And it is exactly the same. Instead of having just being an adapter, it already has the cable on here. You have the headphone socket to go into your source device and you have the RCA connectors that can go into the amplifier. You can also hook this into a larger amplifier such as this Jotunheim, which I've already shown you. And if you make sure you don't forget that you're going to the inputs, not the outputs, you hook those into the RCA sockets thus. And there you have, now I'm using a dongle deck as a source. Now the other question you may have is what happens if you want to use the balanced output of this? This has a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon connector on the front and you can actually use that as a connector to use this as a balanced source to something like this Jotunheim. Well, actually there are adapter cables for that. And this is one of them. This has on one end the Pentacon 4.4 millimeter connector which goes in thus into the balance socket if you have one on your source, in this case it does. And then just as we had with the XLR cables, this goes into the input of the Jotunheim, left into left. If I can get my aim correct and right into right. And there we have, I've hooked up a dongle DAC from the balanced output into the back of the Jotunheim. So the last question people may have is what happens now if I want to go from the Jotunheim to say a pair of active speakers or a power amp? Well then the situation is exactly the same. Instead of plugging your headphones into the front, you will plug your XLR cables, another set in this will be in this case, from the Jotunheim into your active speakers, in this case from the preamplifier outputs. So in this case they're labeled out on the back here and I will plug them in as before, left into left, right into right. And then these outputs will go into say active speakers or a power amp as required. So the, basically the chain starts again. The primary thing you just have to remember is that analog connections have left and right. 
So in the case of headphones, the, the normal headphone socket, you have left, right, and signal return. And with regular hi-fi connections, you have a separate left and right cable. With digital connections, it all happens through one cable. It's digital, it works in a completely different system. So as long as you remember those two things, you'll generally be pretty right. Or did I mean left? Well, I mean, you'll be okay. So I hope that for people who are completely new to audio systems, that is helpful. And if you're wondering about, well, what happens if I want to hook up actual speakers? Well, then you need a speaker amplifier and then the types of wires you use are not plugs so much, but are direct wired connections and that's a separate matter. If you did find this video helpful and it made it was beneficial for you, do consider leaving a super thanks or actually even buying me a coffee. There's a link in the description that will help me make more of these videos in the future. As always, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you online.